שלום עליכם, my dear friends. It is good to see you, so to speak. Because for the last four weeks, even though I did send my lectures to many people, the usual list, nevertheless, it were, those were lectures from other years, from other times. Because in the last four weeks, I was two weeks in the hospital. And then two weeks until now at home for rehabilitation. And the purpose of my talk today is to say thank you to the Lord for saving me, for saving my life. And I thank all those at the, hospi at the hospital, Shari Tzedek took care of us. Baruch Hashem, each one of them deserves many thanks, but especially the thanks will go to the Almighty God Himself. This is the reason why, with your permission, I chose a topic that has to do with thanking Hashem. And it has to do also with the parasha of this coming Shabbat. The parasha will be, of course, Parashat Yitro. Now, who was Yitro? Yitro was the father-in-law of Moses. Now, Moses, our great teacher, who became the redeemer of the Jewish people, he was the son-in-law of Yitro. And who was Yitro? He was a priest. For what? For idol, idol worshippers. And that's something unbelievable. And we have to understand, what is it that made Yitro a man who was not Jewish at all, who became, who converted, of course, and who joined the Jewish people? But in the beginning, he was, in fact, a priest, a very important priest, according to the teaching of our sages. And what was so special about him that he became this, the father-in-law of the, of the choicest of all men, Moses, who gave us the Torah, who saw Hashem face to face, panim el panim, unbelievable. We have to understand why. What made him so special in the eyes of God that he chose him to be the father-in-law of the greatest man on earth since time, since creation, until today? It says in the very beginning of our parasha, Vaishma Yitro Kohen Midian, and Yitro heard, who was Yitro, the priest of Midian, I'm sure he was surrounded by millions of people, riches and every kind of honor. But he chose to relinquish everything that nature has given him to come to join the people of Israel and to become a convert. Unbelievable. Our sages said, What was that that he heard? that made him come. There is a point there that one has to make. Not only that he heard, as our sages said and brought in Rashi, he heard the splitting of the sea, the great miracles that, that were in Egypt, the 10 plagues, the, the war against Amalek. He heard about all the miracles that happened to the Jewish people. And he came. What is it that our sages are trying to tell us here? That many times you could hear, to my humble opinion, I'm saying this, but it looks, it seems to be evident. By nature, you could know about the truth. But does that, is, is that mean that you will go towards the truth? There's a very big difference between hearing about the truth, knowing about the truth, 
And the second thing is to go towards the truth, which means to become an adherent of the truth. That's something else. The whole world, according to, the, to our sages in the Talmud, Masechet Zvachim, at the end, it says there that the whole world heard about the great miracles that God performed for the Jewish people. But how many of them came? Not one, except one, Yitro. Why? Because Yitro was a man of truth, was a man of justice. He was a man who always went after the truth. He was a seeker of the truth. He was an idol worshiper. But he kept on looking for the truth. It's like our father Abraham, who in the beginning did all the kinds of worshipings, all idols. But he was a seeker. He was a, a person who kept on searching after the truth, until he found it when he was 75 years old. Then he found God when he appeared to him. That's when he knew that this is it. There is no other truth. And what does it say? What was that that he heard that made him come? He heard everything. But what was so special about him that he said he found the courage to reject everything behind and to come towards the people of Israel. What a great message. But that was not the only message. There is another thing. When he came towards, after he heard the giving of the Torah, the splitting of the sea, he came all the way towards the Jewish people and towards Moses. And he came to him and what did he say? Baruch Hashem asher itzil etchem mitachat yad mitzrayim yad parom yad mitzrayim. He made a special blessing. He blessed the Almighty. He said, blessed you are, Almighty God, for having saved the people of Israel from the hand of Pharaoh and Egypt. What is so special about this? It's a regular blessing. We all make blessings every day. We have so many blessings that we do, benedictions after benedictions. But there was something special about Yitro. Not only the fact that he was a man who did not belong to the Jewish people before. He came to belong to the Jewish people. He came to convert. He says, Baruch Hashem. The Talmud says in Masechet Sanhedrin on page 94, it says there, Gnai hu le Moshe ul shishim ribo. It is something negative, something bad. For Moses and the 600,000 Jews who were with the Jewish people, who were the the grosso modo, the Jewish people at the time. What is so bad about that? What happened? That only Yitro, who was only a convert, that he blessed the Almighty for, the, for, for, the, for performing the miracles and that God saved the, the Jewish people. So what is so bad? So the Talmud says, because Yitro was the only one who gave a blessing to God, who said, thank you, Hashem, for saving the, these people. But wait a minute. But the Jewish people did even more. The Jewish people, after the splitting of the sea, they came up with a marvelous song. Az Yashir Moshe Uvnei Israel et Ashira Zot Lashem. We all know. We say it every day in the morning. Seven days a week we say the shira, the song that was that the Jewish people sang with Moses after the splitting of the sea. So what do you want? What else do you want? The answer is that singing is one thing, but saying thank you is another. Yitro did what Moses and the Jewish people did not do. Yes, the Jewish people, they did a marvelous thing by singing to the Lord 
and praising him for what he did. But at the same time, they did not say, Baruch Atta Hashem, blessed you are, Almighty God. Who said it? Yitro. What is so special about that? We have to understand. To my humble opinion, it seems to be very clear. According to na human nature, Yitro was a convert. But remember, we cannot forget that he was not a Jew before, that he belonged to other nations. It is impossible to ask from someone to relinquish completely the memory of the other nations, that he belonged to other nations. So it was not easy for, for, for Yitro to, to completely forget about his nation, his natural nation. Our sages said something enigmatic about, based on the pasuk, on the verse, Vayihad Yitro, which means that Yitro was very happy. But our sages, with their way, they said, Vayihad. It doesn't say Vayismah. They said Vayihad. Why does it say Vayihad? Shena'asa besaro chidudin chidudin. That the flesh of Yitro became painful, to put it to the best of my ability. It became pain, painful. Why? Because he heard that all the nation of Egypt went down the drain. They went and they completely were inundated by Yamsuf. Yes, it was a matter of great salvation for the Jewish people, but in the meantime, his people, the non-Jewish people, what happened to them, it, it pained very much Yitro. And yet he came to the truth, because he said, this is the truth. Many people know the truth. Do they come for it? Do they come for it? Not one. Only a special person, like Yitro. But at the same time, Yitro said, thank you, Hashem, for saving the Jewish people. Why did he have to say that? Especially after he felt so sorry about the loss of the other nations, of Egypt. It's because he is a man of truth. He cannot avoid, he cannot escape the truth. And when he saw the salvation of the Jewish people, he said, thank you, Hashem, for doing it. Because if you did not save your people, how would we know with certitude the truth that you are the only God? Thank you, Hashem, for saving them. Because that was the only way for me and for everybody to know that there is only one God. No other religion, but only one God. Thank you for it. For that, our sages said, that's why Yitro had the merit to be the father-in-law of Moses, to have a special parashaf dedicated to him on his name, by Shema Yitro, Parashat Yitro, and also another parasha. Inside the parasha of Yitro, there is another chapter called Ve'atta Mikolam, which was practically the words of Yitro. The greatest honor, as we know it. Why? Because he had the guts not only to recognize the truth, but to say, thank you, Hashem, for saving the people, because only when we see the people of Israel alive, that's how we know that there is only one God. It is my feelings, my dear friends, as we are now in a time which, a time of great revelation with Corona and whatever you want, and all the problems in the world, as it has been written in the Talmud, in Masechet Sanhedrin, page 98, and so forth, and many other places. All the signs that the Mashiach and the redemption is coming is on its way. But there is one thing that one should admit, that the whole world will have to come to this and say, 
the whole world, all the nations will have to come one day when they will realize what is the truth. And the biggest revelation is when to see that the Jewish people is still alive. After what so many generations of terrible suffering that the Jewish people has endured at the hands of the nations. When finally the nations will realize that because they have been hating us all the time, only because of one reason, because they know the truth and they were afraid of the truth. So they didn't want to come to the truth. They are not Yitro. But at the end, they will have to be like Yitro. By force, they will have to come and say, Baruch Hashem asher yitzilethem. Blessed you are almighty that you save these people. And only because we see the people of Israel still alive and well to do, then we know this is the truth. And that's why we have to bless you, Hashem, that finally we see with our own eyes the truth, something that we have known by instinct or by our intelligence, but we didn't have the guts to come and, and, and admit it. But now we have no choice. Yes, you are the truth, Hashem. And that's why all this requires two things. Number one, you have to know that the obligation of saying thank you is an obligation that is greater than any other obligation. Number one, the obligation to say thank you to the Lord. As I said, thank you to Hashem for all the miracles that He has done to me in the last four weeks. But at the same time, when a person says thank you to Hashem, he lowers his head. And also you have to say thank you to your friends, to be grateful to everything, to say thank you to Hashem, of course, for having good hands, for having good feet, for having a good head for having a good body and a good thinking. But at the same time, let's not forget that we, when, whenever we have any favor, to say thank you to our friends, to say thank you to anybody to whom it is required to say thank you. Because to say thank you means that you are losing some of your vanity and therefore Hashem is with you. Hashem doesn't want anybody who is haughty and considered it's the hatred of God. But when, when Hashem sees a heart that goes after the truth, a heart that goes and is grateful to people and grateful to God, he belongs to God. Then that's why to say thank you is so important. That's the reason why we are called Yehudi. The name a Jew in Hebrew is Yehudi, which means lehodot, which means to thank, to say thank you, to admit. Because when you say thank you, you admit. People, many times you, you get a favor, but you don't admit that you get it from your, from your friend. Hashem doesn't like that. It is very important that one should always say thank you to Hashem every day. That's why, in the, it is a Jewish tradition that every morning when you wake up, you have to say, Thank you, Hashem, for everything that you give us. Look how much Yitro, a non-Jew who became a Jew, a convert, how much he got and how much honor he got from God, just because he said, thank you to Hashem. Let us say thank you to Hashem every day, but not only with our lips, with our heart, with our feelings, with our understanding. And if you could say a shira, what did we say before? That the Jewish people did say shira, did make a song as Yashir Moshe, but it was not enough. You still have to say thank you to Hashem. And I say this is what we understand from the words in the one of the one of the words of King David in the book of Psalms. It's good to say thank you to Hashem and to sing to Him. Those are two obligations, to say thank you and also to sing to Him. To sing to Him means a prayer, 
means praising Hashem. Mean if one can, if one, if one can say, can perform a nice song, uh, dedicated to the Lord. How great it is! No question about it. But let us not forget that with our own heart we have to say thank you to Hashem. Shabbat shalom, my friend.